So what can we learn from this? Well, what we can learn is that if I have an equation of a budget line, like this one that we've seen now a couple of times, this is not the only way of specifying the budget line. A completely equivalent way of specifying exactly the same budget line would be, for example, to double each of the numbers or to triple them or whatever. So as you can see, we actually have an infinite number of ways of writing exactly the same equation of the budget line. What that in turn means is that I can turn one of the prices, just one of them, into a one without changing the budget line. Whatever budget line I start with, 6x1 plus 3x2 say equal to, I don't know, 30. If I want to make this into an equation where P2 is equal to one without changing the budget line, I can easily do that. Just divide both sides by three. That would give me two X one plus now one times X two equal to 10. And these two equations represent exactly the same budget line intersecting Y and the X axis at 10 and five. This is something that is very often used in microeconomics. So you would hear a sentence such as, we normalize the price of good two to be equal to one, for example. Just keep in mind that once we have done that, once we have normalized the price of good two in this case to one, the interpretation of these numbers will now be different. In the original one, 30, for example, well, that was my income in whatever currency or unit that we're talking about. For example, in this example, I had an income of 30 Swedish crowns and the price of good one was six. The price of good two was three. Well, once I have normalized it, making the price of good two equal to one, this number here, 10, well, that's no longer my income in Swedish crowns. It is my income divided by three, or another way of putting it, this number here is now the maximum number of good two that I can purchase. Similarly, this is no longer the price of good one. It's the price of good one divided by three, or if you like, the relative price of good one. The two here simply means that good one is twice as expensive as good two. Another way of saying the same thing is that when we have an equation of a budget line like this, we have a degree of freedom. We can simply pick one of these numbers to be equal to any number, well, except zero, without changing anything. The most common and most important case is to select one of the prices to be equal to one. And we typically do that when good to is a composite good, or basically think of it as a basket of good. We just simply normalize the price of this basket to be equal to one and express the price of good one in terms of this basket and the income in terms of this basket. Another thing we can do is we can normalize income to one. Going from the same example, if I just divide both sides by 30, I would get 0.2 x1 plus 0.1 x2 equal to 1. Again, exactly the same budget line as the original one. Since I've divided both sides by m, my income, we now have to think of, for example, this number as p1 over m. So 0.2 in this case simply means that good one costs 20% of my income good one costs 10% of my income. So from this, we can easily see that I can afford at maximum five units of X1 or 10 units of X2. So a quick review of this important discussion of normalization. If I make an equal percentage increase in both prices, then the budget line will shift inwards and the new budget line will be parallel to the old one. 
the effect is identical to a decrease in income. Obviously, an equal percentage decreases in prices will result in a parallel shift outwards of the budget line, and this will be the same as an increase in income. If I make an equal percentage increase in both prices and in income, then there will be no change whatsoever to the budget line. So we have this one degree of freedom in the parameters, which is very natural. I mean, it really should not matter if I measure prices and income in Swedish crowns or if I measure them in euro. My budget should be the same. Since one euro is about 10 Swedish crowns, going from euro to crowns would simply mean that all prices and income will be multiplied by 10, and that should not affect my budget. Due to this one degree of freedom, we can normalize the price of either good to one with no change in the budget line, or we could normalize income to one. This normalization is particularly useful if one of the goods is a composite good. A composite good is a basket of many different goods, just like a shopping cart full of goods. The choice the consumer faces is then between a traditional good, such as cookies, and baskets of goods. She may, for example, pick x1 equal to 6 cookies and x2 equal to 1.2 baskets. If each basket contained, say, 5 apples, she would end up with 6 apples plus a bunch of other things. Whenever we have this type of situation, we typically normalize the price of the basket to be 1. For example, if the second good is our basket, then the equation of the budget line will read P1x1 plus x2 is equal to m. However, keep in mind that P1 is now no longer the price of good 1, and m is no longer our income in our currency. P1 is now a relative price. For example, if P1 is 0.01, then that means that one cookie costs the same as 0.01 baskets, or if you want, a basket costs the same as 100 cookies. Similarly, M is the relative income in terms of baskets. If M is equal to 20, the interpretation is now that your entire income can buy you 20 baskets.